Hi, Billy Farnella here, and we're talking here leading your best life. Now, this is a semi-controversial topic, but super important if you're a bloke, if you're a man, and probably a woman as well. But I was talking to a friend this morning about um, men and their behaviour. Anyway, stay tuned. This is a good one. If you want to be more attractive or at least have a better relationship with your female partner blokes, I suggest you listen up to this one. Well, welcome back. This has come about as a result of talking to a friend this morning on the phone about a relationship with a, a guy, and uh, her kids call this guy a simp. A simp. I said, what is a simp? It's kind of like a wimp, but I've now looked it up on uh, Google. Simp. A silly or foolish person, a noun, a verb, to simp over or to simp. Someone is to engage in simp behaviour. The kids are onto it. These days, the most common definition of the noun simp seems to be this, a man who throws money or attention at a woman in order to gain her affection, even when his tactics aren't working. And I go to an article here uh, in Men's Health magazine. Here's what Here's what it is to be a simp, and I'm just going to quote. The new Partridge Dictionary slang unconventional English trace is simp. Shortened sentence or version of simpleton going back to 1903. A prominent example comes from the 1923 New York Times article which quoted a letter from a woman criticising unmarried men. Those bachelor simps are afraid to take a chance and too tight to share their earnings with a wife. That's a sick burn even by today's standards. So uh, this whole thing of simp, simpleton behaviour, um, 1980s rap artists Hugh M E M C Too Short E40 were using simp to describe men who were overly sympathetic, too sympathetic, suckers, I, oh, there, here's another one, simp is an acronym for suckers, idolising mediocre pussy, oh my God, um, But really, that's suckers idolising mediocre pussy. Oh, my God. Um, But in recent times, I've been listening to a podcast by a guy, I think it's called The Unabashed Male, and he talks about alpha male and beta males. And when I first heard it, I was kind of confronted by it, going, oh, gee, what, what's an alpha male versus a beta male? So I've, I've, I've actually gone to GPT chat to say, what are we talking about here, this alpha male, beta male thing? Uh, it's important to note terms like alpha males and beta males come from simplistic and often misleading views of social dynamic. Human relationships, of course, are complex, and individuals are attracted to a ri- wide range of qualities. Trying to fit people into rigid categories may oversimplify the reality, but that being said, if you're interested in tips to enhance personal qualities that are generally considered attractive to, I suppose, I don't know, it could be gay as well, but certainly females to males, and maybe males to females, I don't know. Um, Keep in mind that these are not exclusive uh, to any particular alpha male archetype, but again, thinking of simps and wimps, and are women attracted to wimps and simps versus are they attracted to people, and here it is, 10, confidence. Are you confident? Confident. Confidence is attractive in itself. I mean, whether you're tall, short, you know, but whatever you even look like, your confidence, how you project yourself, what energy you bring to the room, your confidence, it's crucial to differentiate between confidence and arrogance. Be comfortable with who you are and believe in your abilities. So your own personal confidence. One. Two, ambition and drive. Having goals and aspirations demonstrates motivation and can be inspiring to others. And true, people often, women, some women are certainly attracted to people with ambition and drive. I mean, should we even dare say, you know, in a in a primeval setting or even, you know, an animal setting, uh, who are people attracted to? Who do they want to breed with? And again, this is going to offend. Oh, Lee, you're offended. Me, let you, how dare you? How dare you associate me with some primitive, primeval creature? Well, we say the DNA. I remember my mate Professor Grant Donovan, our Dr. Grant Donovan, talking about the the drive of the DNA. The DNA just wants to procreate, wants to wants to wants to survive to the next generation. So, are there subconscious? and conscious drivers at work here, you know, but confidence, ambition and drive, having goals and aspirations demonstrates motivation and can be inspiring to others. Strive for personal growth and success in your chosen endeavours without being arrogant. As they say, self-improvement. Are you continuously working on developing your skills and your knowledge? Do you read? Uh, You know, are you developing yourself? This shows that you're 
invested in becoming the best version of yourself. People are attracted to people being the... No, I want to hang around with people who don't want to be the best versions of themselves. I want to hang around with people who just want to do nothing. Yeah, sure. Uh, Four, respect for others. Um, People treating everyone with respect regardless of their gender, their background or their status. And I think this is about being present with the person, being present and being polite, being considered, being empathetic, listening, listening at the same time with good communication skills, good communication skills being a good listener, but also expressing yourself clearly. Now, if I listen to this unabashed male and he uses NLP techniques, he said people are attracted to the person with the strongest frame, the strongest frame of reference or point of view. So in other words, you know, rather than bending and twisting, and he even talks about frame checks where, where the, the female or people around you will test, is this guy really serious or is this person serious? Are they willing to take a stand on their point of view or are they willing to um, present or disagree or are they just super amiable, super agreeable, never say no, always yes, yes, I'll do anything for you, darling, whatever you want, darling. I literally had a conversation with a, a mate down, down the surf club who is shocked that his wife left him. And I said, I've, do you really want me to give you my opinion? Uh, are you were happy for me to give you some feedback? I said, I think you did too much for her. I think you said yes too many times. I think she made all the decisions and eventually she lost respect for you. It wasn't an equal partnership at all. You were a puppy dog. You were a doormat. Now, I'm, I'm exaggerating just to make the point there. I'm not sure I actually called him a puppy dog or a doormat, but I want to just make the point that, yes, you want to be uh, of service and help, and at times you need to take a stand. You need to literally man up, grow a couple of gonads, mate. Um, You know, no, I just want to be Mr. Nice Guy, get her a cup of tea every day and say yes to everything she wants. Yeah, watch where that leads. Um, besides you getting walked over and what is it, how do you feel about it, um, what does it mean? The respect she has for you. They do want gonads in the relationship, I think. Um, good communication skills, a good listener, express yourself clearly, express your point of view, give four reasons why, this is why, this is why, this is why, this is why. How does that sound to you? Are you happy to do that? Let's get on with it then. Effective communication is key to understanding and connecting with others. And this is it. Sense of humour. Sense of humour. A good sense of humour is often appreciated, or often, to lighten the mood, make interactions enjoyable, showcase a relaxed and positive personality. Years ago, I remember um, a 60 Minutes show, uh, which was of the plastic surgery that um, hospital of fighter pilots in the Second World War. And when those fighter pilots were shot down, often they were in planes that were on fire. They had petrol all over them. And so these guys had massive skin grafts right to the point where they had long, like, elephant trunks, um, elephant trunks to grow the skin from the legs back to the face. And the, the, the surgeon running that hospital, and I, if I had time, I'd look it up, but he made the point of hiring attractive nurses, hiring attractive nurses. And so the dynamic in the place was you had these guys who had literally almost died, burnt almost to a cinder, all this skin and these elephant trunk things, um, skin grafts happening. And they said, invariably, most of them married the nurses. So how did that happen? So it clearly wasn't physical attraction. They said, no, these guys, they laughed, they laughed their way to love. They laughed, and of course I've had people say, you can laugh a woman to bed. I've never actually had that experience myself. But um, the giggle, for, I can actually I can tell mates of mine who have, I mean, this, there's a couple of unbelievable alpha males who are great gigglers, and um, anyway, let's not go down that path. But the fact is, a sense of humour is super important. The giggle factor, having people laughing. What we know, again, from an LP and communication, when people laugh, they open up. When people laugh, they open up to suggestion. When people laugh, their heart opens as well. Humour, being human, unbelievable. The other thing people are attracted to is a healthy lifestyle. They're attracted to people who take care of their physical and mental health. Regular exercise, balanced diet, sufficient sleep, um, 
contribute to your well-being and, of course, contribute to the energy you bring into the relationship you bring to the conversation. So a healthy, positive, confident energy with views, with knowledge, with self-improvement, bringing that into the moment, being fully present with the male or female that you're talking to changes the universe. You're not a simp or a wimp at that point. You're an interesting, exciting person. And of course, the other thing is, it's like from an NLP point of view, what are they associating you with? What emotional state are is the other person associating you with? Being excited, being interested, laughing, good time, or are they associating you with boredom, negativity, anxiety, weakness. No, you you want people associating you with a positive energy, a positive state. Assertiveness, know what you want and don't be afraid to express your needs and boundaries. Exactly. This is where we're talking about frame check. Okay, that is outside the boundary. Well, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen with me. If you want to be with me, this is what needs to happen. Well, being assertive is different from being aggressive. It involves just standing up for yourself while respecting others. And this is where I think a lot of guys go wrong in trying to be so nice, so wimpy, so simpy that there's no boundaries. And in fact, as my friend said today, I, I don't find that simpy behavior, that puppy dog just hanging around with no point of view, just nothing to say, just nothing to contribute. And again, what's the energy that the wimpy puppy dog person is bringing to the relationship? It's not a positive energy. It's not an attractive energy, whether it be the DNA, whether it just be intellectually. You're not attractive, mate. Throw as much money as you like. You're not fun to be with. Number nine, leadership qualities. Displaying leadership qualities in various aspects of your life, whether it's at work, in your community, in your social circle, leadership involves responsibility and accountability, which essentially is, this is where we're heading. This is what we're trying to do here. These are the people we're working with to make it happen. Okay, that's stuffed up. I wore, I wore it and I move on. I learned from it. You know, let's move on. Whoa, I'm so sorry. I wish it had happened different. You know, the wimpy. No. And then 10, Authenticity, being true to yourself. Authenticity is attractive and people generally appreciate sincerity. Pretending to be someone you're not is unlikely to lead to genuine and lasting impressions, lasting connections. This is me. This is me. This is who I am. So get clear. Who are you? Who are you? So here it is. Remember, individual preferences, of course, vary. And there's no one-size-fits-all approach to attraction. Building healthy and meaningful relationships involve mutual respect, shared values, effective communication. Instead of focusing on rigid stereotypes, strive to be the best version of yourself and seek, seek genuine connections based on mutual understanding and compatibility. And I think, you know, when I think about it, you know, in the female relationships that I have that I appreciate most is an equal two-way flow of information and ideas and laughing in a amongst it and laugh, being able to laugh at ourselves, laugh with ourselves, ad admit our mistakes and at the same time express where we want to go, what our opportunities are, how, how we can learn or even help each other. But if the other person's constantly disagreeing, constantly putting you down, uh, constantly wanting to go, I'm smarter than you or I'm better than you or I'm this or I'm that and or they're putting other people down, get ready to run, get ready to walk away. Just in your own mind go, that's not who I want to be with. That's not who I want to be with. In my mind, I've realized, you know, relationships are not unconditional. There are conditions. There are boundaries. You know, if you step over the boundary, you're constantly insulting me, uh, constantly trying to put me down in public, uh, constantly, you know, I can't say anything without you wanting to correct, correct me in public, correct me in private. Uh, there's not a flow of conversation. It's a game of t tennis match of, you know, I say black, you say white. It's like, this is not a relationship I want to be in. This is, not, this is not within the boundaries of what I would call a healthy, fun, productive, enjoyable relationship. So get clear on your boundaries. And again, as some people do, they literally write down their ideal relationship. What does the person look like? What are their values? What do they laugh at? What are the movies they like to go to? The clearer you are, the more likely you are to attract that person. It's a beautiful thing. Funnily enough, in the change room this morning, guys were talking about one guy who I think had divorced his wife and remarried her two or three times. And he jokingly said, 
At my, after my first divorce, she took half, she spent all that, came back again and took the other half. How bizarre. Human beings are very complicated, aren't they? But what we're doing in this podcast, particularly as a man, is to start to be clear about this alpha male behaviour, or at least what women are attracted to, and not only that, what you should be attracted to in terms of shaping yourself. So we've talked about confidence, ambition and drive, self-improvement, respect for others, good communication skills, sense of humour, healthy lifestyle, assertive, not aggressive, leadership qualities, and being yourself, being the best version of yourself, being authentic, be authentic. I hope that's helped you, because that's, as I say, come out of this conversation this morning. Um, relationships are certainly complicated and complex, but work on yourself. As we say, you know, for things to change, first I must change. For my relationships to change, first I must change. And these 10 points help you do that. Hope that helps you. And certainly don't bother being a simp, a simp or a wimp. Be authentically strong yourself. Want to find out more? Touch base. I'm Lee Farnell and I want to help you lead your best life. See you next time.